Yo, what's going on guys? Savage here. Today we're going to be analyzing some recent gameplay of mine. Um, this is basically going to be tips and tricks. We're going to go over an entire gameplay. We're going to point out my mistakes, um, things that I did good, and the reasons why I think they're mistakes and the reasons why I decided to do this instead of that. But guys, before we get into this, do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit that sub button. Also, go ahead and smash the like button because this video is going to be a banger. And follow me over on Twitch where we record all of this gameplay. Again, guys, thank you for the recent support. Channel has been absolutely amazing. Everyone's been really digging these tip videos, so hopefully we can keep these coming. Before we get into this video, guys, you all know that no matter how many tips and tricks videos I put out, it will never answer all your questions. Tips and tricks change based on the scenario. So you could be trying to do one thing, you'll be listening, you'll be like, Savage said to do this, so I'm gonna always do that. Don't always do that, guys. Keep an open mind, get ready to change your plans because as things get thrown at you that you're not expecting, you're gonna have to adapt real quick. It's a battle royale after all. There was one tip and trick that actually worked this game would not be challenging but without further ado guys let's go ahead and dive into this all right guys so as soon as the map loads go ahead and load your map find out the planes route and kind of judge where the closest section of bounties and objectives are and dive to that area if it's far away go ahead and go for it don't be worried if it's not a hot drop you don't have to get kills right off the bat you can get kills later on your objective your main point is to get money get your stash get your load out as fast as possible and then you can slay out the last thing you want to do is try to land somewhere hot even if you win, you're fighting it out. You're not going to get much money from them. Even if you do win the fights, you're going to end up broke as shit with 100 people left. And then people are going to start flanking you and, and coming right at you uh, with their loadouts. And you'll have no way to defend yourself. All right, guys. So the trick to parachuting for long distances is go ahead, jump out the plane. And as soon as you're flying, you're going to see your gun out. As soon as he starts to put his gun away, go ahead and pull your parachute. And for about mm, a split second, go ahead and release again. And you'll gain speed. And as soon as he, start, as he puts his gun away, go ahead and release the parachute again. Keep doing this over and over. You can fly basically across the map using this technique. Um, unfortunately, you know, for some reason, Activision decided to go ahead and put in kill streaks right at the dump. So as you see here, not even 10 seconds in before I can even get into an actual fight, we have a cluster strike on us. Now with cluster strikes, of course, get off the roof. That's pretty common sense. However, even if you're on the second floor of the building, the cluster strikes or airstrikes can still down you. So we went ahead and jumped off, ran to the bottom floor, but immediately go back to the high ground, especially since there's so many people. Even if you can't get the kill, damage them as much as possible. That way your teammates can get the kill or the other teams fighting them can get the kill. Um, either way, don't worry about conserving ammo. This isn't your loadout in the first place. And because you just landed, you'll be able to find more loot here soon. So as you can see, my team is in the middle of action right now. I don't have much ammo. I have eight bullets and an RPG, but I'm gonna go ahead and send it um, and luckily get the double kill. And unfortunately, I was not able to save my teammates, but I'm gonna go ahead and loot as fast as possible. This is a huge problem I see with a lot of people. They'll sit there, they'll see a pile of loot and they'll just sit here and analyze one item at a time. Don't do that, guys. Just take a quick glance, look at what you think is most important and pick it up. You can always go back later if you need to. Pick up an item, kind of scan, make sure no one's there. And then of course, as you see, I'm going back after I scan, now that I know I'm safe and I'm picking up secondary, I'm swapping my weapons out. Just get weapons that can hold you over until the coast is clear. Now, again, we are going after objectives. We are going after people. We want to get as much money as possible and we're going to stay as a team. I see way too many times people get into the looting phase and they'll spread out. Don't spread out, guys. Stay as a team, run together, and just absolutely annihilate people. Just pick people off one by one because that's exactly what they're doing. As you can see here, me and my teammate are going up and we completely dominate that guy, just duo. Um, Riot Shields, unfortunately, can't do much about that. Um, but luckily, we ended up flanking this guy together and he goes down without a hitch. I kind of wasted an airstrike. Don't do that, especially since I launched it right on top of me. This will probably kill you. Um, it might even kill me. I can't remember if it downed me or not, but don't do that. What a waste. Bad decision on my part. Just kind of panicked and threw it. I didn't know if there was more than one person there. Um, and because of the riot shield, I didn't know if he's going to be a little bitch and sit there with the riot shield up. So I wanted to make sure he was dead, but save it, guys. Don't waste it. We're probably going to need it later on. As you can see, I'm constantly pulling up my mini map. This is something you'll always see me doing. People always tell me in the comment section, Savage, why don't you use a square map? Square map's better. You're a noob for using a circle map. And honestly, it's just preference. As much as I'm in my map, I don't need the square map. I'm always aware of what's going on. You can test it, guys, throughout this entire video. Watch how many times I pull up the map. Go ahead and count. Guys, if you count how many times I pull up the mini map, please type in the number uh, in the comment section so I can I can see how many times I do it this match. But as you can see, I'm marking all the buy stations, kind of coming up with a game plan of where we're going to go now that we do have money to buy back teammates. If you're playing as a squad, guys, you want to get a good squad together that can win their gulags. You know, even the best players lose their gulags. But unfortunately, because we're buying back teammates, we're not going to get our load out for a very long time. And I'm glad we pulled up this video. And again, I did not look at this video beforehand. So this is fresh to me. This was from almost a week ago. Um, so we're just going to kind of go by this step by step. Now, I'm not 100% sure why we're going over here. And there it is right there. We kind of turned it around and realized, shit, this is a bad idea. There's nothing there. Maybe there's a bounty there we, we spotted. 
and uh, another player might have picked it up. I don't know. And as you can see, I make a beeline right towards this search objective. Now, unfortunately, my teammates wanted to go to a different one. Made more sense, actually. The one I was going to originally was heading away from the circle. Don't want to do that. Of course, we still have three minutes, but it, nonetheless, you want to kind of go to the edge of the circle. You want to always work your way towards the circle. So we're going to go ahead and grab the bounty towards the circle. Um, loot as we're going, of course, because again, we don't have enough money for anything. Now, going back to talking about how you need to be looting with your teammates or staying with your teammates, this is a bad thing I'm doing right now. I don't know why. I think because I was so low on ammo, I was kind of paranoid and I wanted to get as much ammunition as possible. But if you look at the mini map, I'm kind of lagging behind my team. Not much, but enough to where if I get shot at, it's going to take them a little bit to get to me. And if I go down, I'm definitely going to get executed. You know, sometimes you got plans and sometimes a wrench gets thrown to it especially in Warzone, you're always gonna have wrench thrown into your plans and of course as we're going for the search objectives to get more money uh a teammate calls out another team out there towards the north so of course we're gonna go ahead and engage these guys uh fortunately i have a pretty decent ar it's thermal so i can basically see everything it's still early game so most people aren't gonna have their ghost load out um i usually hate thermals i always preach against thermals because your eyes will get used to looking for heat signatures and you'll kind of just abandon people who do have ghosts on and that will be your downfall but that's for another video so while we're engaging this team, two of us are putting pressure on this team while the other two are making their way to Firehouse in order to get the search so we can get some more money. Guys, this game's all about multitasking and doing multiple things at once. You don't want to just tunnel vision and have everybody fight the team unless you absolutely have to. We already had two knocked. There was no reason for all four of us to engage. All right, guys, as you can see right here, I'm keeping my body behind this metal fencing or whatever you want to call it. Um, that way I have some sort of concealment. I will not call this cover because you can shoot through this. That's the difference between cover and concealment and now that i'm about to make my way of course i have to leave hard cover and then i get peppered from a guy to my left right. but because it's such a short distance i'm able to get inside and get safe always stay near cover all right guys so whenever you're together as a team um the enemy starts looking at your team they start getting tunnel vision as you can see right here i'm able to sneak around this guy come up from behind and absolutely annihilate him because he's tunnel vision and this is something i always preach don't get tunnel vision always be aware of your surroundings um play with cover he was out of cover he had no teammates around him and he was trying to 1v4 a bad mistake on his part good play on my part going with the flank and unfortunately we're still down a player all right so right now as i'm watching our position is kind of bad we're actually out there with no cover so of course we're going to make our way back to the building plus there's a team on the uav over to the uh southeast so we're going to try to make our way over there get some extra kills and hopefully buy our teammate back unfortunately these windows right here you can't vault through for some stupid reason activision did a pretty terrible job with the vaulting mechanic there's a lot of things you should be able to vault onto that you can't um being two and a half months in the war zone i thought by now it would get fixed um this is another pet peeve of mine having to go to the roof having to go up up these damn stairs there needs to be an elevator shaft in every building and there needs to be a staircase going into the same roof as well that way there's multiple entrances onto the roof that way if there's a team camping up there you guys can actually have more than one way to go up there way too many times do i fall into a trap where i go up a roof and there's four guys literally just ads onto the rope and uh you just don't stand a chance now right here because it took us so long to get our loadout of course we get the free loadout uh, we went ahead and grabbed our loadout saved us some money unfortunately we didn't die beforehand again guys loadouts win games this is the first br that i play that we actually had pre-built loadouts i'm not a huge fan of it to be honest i feel like the game just gets very redundant using the same couple of guns every every day but you know it's what we got to deal with so it's a strategy i'm going to teach you guys go for your loadouts first and foremost always 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 but at the same time do not abandon fighting for your loadout this is something that really irritates the hell out of me is when people have bounties on them, for some reason, they have the urge to just go in a corner and camp. I don't understand why they would do that. Whenever I have a bounty on me, I might want to get the high ground, but I'm not going to sit up there for hours on end and not peek. I'm going to try to take some shots. I'm going to try to down a player. Um, this guy is just really delaying the inevitable and kind of calling out his team at the same time. Not only do we know where he's at now, but we know where his team's at and his whole team is going to pay the price. In this situation, guys, it's better if you know you're screwed and you have the bounty on you. It's better to let your team get out of there and buy you back than to just sit up and camp. Either A, fight it, or B, come up with a plan and sacrifice your life if you have the bounty and let your team escape. That way you can continue the game. That whole team right there got wiped. They may have gotten gulags, but based on the gameplay, they're probably not coming back. And as you can see, still, we're doing the search bounties. You know, you can never have enough money. There's so many games that we win where we have, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars together as a team. Um, and, and again, money wins games. You can buy loadouts. You can buy another loadout for ghosts. If you don't want to wait for the free ones to come, you can buy UAVs, airstrikes, things like that. It's something I preach. Now, if you notice here, I'm bouncing from tree to tree and rock to rock. I'm trying to stay close to some form of cover. A lot of people just run in the streets. They don't really care. Stay between rocks. Stay close to cover. Of course, you can't stay close to cover all the time, but if there's cover nearby, guys, stay by it. All right, guys, know your role on the squad. I am a sniper and range guy. I use a Grawl or an M4. 
or an M13, as well as a sniper. Now, there are a lot of reasons for this. It's just something that I prefer after jumping back and forth between sniper and SMG, sniper and AR, AR and SMG. It's something that I like to do. I really enjoy sniping. You're going to see a lot of sniping on this channel. It's one of my favorite things to do. I just have more fun with it. And I find personally that having an AR is the better combo because if you do happen to break their armor and you want to go ahead and pop the shot, you can just go ahead, switch your weapon and finish them off with that. I like that personally. And as you can see, because I know my role, I'm staying as far back from buildings as possible. I'm let my teammates go in first, clear the buildings, and then I'll move up to them. Quick tip, whenever I see firehouse or any building with windows, I'm going to go ahead and shoot them out as you can see here. And a lot of problems I see, as you can see here, by the time I get to the buy station, there's already a kill streak waiting. There's already things happening. I'm buying a bunch of kill streaks for everybody. That way we can all call in. That way we can call in an advanced UAV and we can just stack up. Guys, before you get to the buy station, go ahead and plan out your buy, okay? Go ahead and plan out. Be like, I'm gonna, I have this much money. I'm gonna buy all the UAVs. You buy this, you buy this. Guys, buy plates, this and that. That way when you get to the buy station, in case there's someone ADS on it waiting or camping it, Y'all can buy real quick and get the hell out of there. As you can see, we're not there for that long. But now because we have UAV, because we went for searches, guys, again, I'm gonna force this down your throat, go for searches. Um, it is just a, a hidden gem I feel like nobody utilizes. But because we have an advanced UAV, now we know where all the nearby teams are. As you can see, again, I'm keeping myself on the edge. I'm keeping myself near, near rocks and hard cover, trying my best to work my way to my team as my team clears the buildings. Now. This is a hit or miss. If my team goes into a building, all three get wiped, now solo. So you kind of want to stay semi close to your team. Don't just sit back while they're all inside. As you can see, I push up to win their push up, but you don't want to be the first one in. If you have a sniper, guys, and an AR, do not be the first into a building unless you have an SMG and you can outplay the enemy. All right, at this point, we really don't need anything. We have a bunch of money. We have a bunch of streaks up. They should have all their streaks. I've already used all mine, so I might go back and buy a streak. I think that is exactly what I'm doing right now. By the way, the armor satchel was an absolute blessing. Genius idea by Activision. I will give him credit for that. That has changed the game for me, at least. Uh, and I'm sure every other player on the game as well. All right, guys. Again, you saw that I used the UAV and I bought another one. We're going to go ahead and use the UAV to our advantage and push the team. Guys, some, sometimes I'm watching people play and they'll go to the buy station, they'll buy UAV and they'll sit in the building. What a waste of money. What a waste of UAV. Guys, you have to play aggressive. The thing with this game, if you want to get more wins, is playing aggressive. You're not going to see... A successful uh, battle royale player sitting in a building ever think about the streamers that you watch if you do watch streamers how often do you sit, see them sitting on top of a roof or in a corner or aimed out of the window now of course there will be certain situations that were like that but overall most of the time 99 percent time we're all running around all right guys so right there i always preach Staying near cover. I should have been against the wall. I should have been against the car. That way, when the guy pops out of the building, if I would have got shot at, I could have immediately went prone or hid behind the building and gotten safe. But because I was out in the open, like a dumbass, I got absolutely annihilated. Fortunately, my team is good and they were able to kill the guy and save my ass. Guys, again, I, I will run this on your throat. I'm still guilty of doing this as well, but you want to stay near cover at all costs. This map right here is probably one of the best maps of any BR I've ever played with having plenty of cover. Of course, there are exceptions to the rule, uh, airfield and a lot of other places that just have nothing and you're kind of screwed. But in most situations, you're going to have some form of cover. As you can see right here, I'm usually always last in, not just because I'm ADS with the sniper, but it's always pretty much planned. I don't ever want to be the first. Again, I want to reiterate that if you're not using SMG, guys, if you're not that proficient with that SMG, don't be the first one in. And if you're getting new to SMGs, go in with another buddy, go in with another teammate. It's better to 2v1, 2v2, 2v3, 2v4 than go in solo. All right, right now, one important thing, especially when playing duos, trios, or quads, is callouts. There have been the callouts are absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm playing with a really good team that I usually play with right now, so they're telling me exactly where they're at. That's why you see me ADSing around corners before they even cross because they're giving the callout. Now, one thing I will recommend that they didn't do here is if you go down, guys, if you go down, if you're down and you're safe, and the enemy's in front of you, mark the enemy, guys. Give the live ping. The live ping is literally a wall hack. It only lasts for a few seconds. But it is a wall hack. You know where they're going and you can pre-fire a corner if needed. All right, guys. Stuns and C4 are your best friends. Stuns are awesome. That way, if a teammate throws a stun in a window and there's an enemy there, he slows the target's movement down. Now, the best thing about that is you can now double C4 the hell out of that guy. And even if he gets hit, he can't run away because he's stunned. Now, a lot of times when you throw a C4 in a window, you get a hit marker. You throw the second one up there and he's already gone. He's already into another room. As you can see now, my team is live marking everything. And because I'm a sniper, I'm very, very blessed to have that. Unfortunately, because of the where they're at, even if I do get a knock, I probably and most likely will not get the kill. As you can see, I'm going from rock to rock here, looking at the targets. Now, 
this is a pretty far distance and again we shouldn't really be focused on this building because even if we get a knock we probably will not be able to finish so not only are we wasting ammo but if we get hit we're wasting plates and they know we're here if you look at the circle on the mini map we're actually on the edge and they have to work their way to us so the best case scenario for us is just to gatekeep them uh, and the best way to gatekeep is not let them know we're here you see me push out of the circle and try to push them and then i realize shit let me fall back to some better cover and wait for them to come up if we would have gone to the rocks they could have come up from my right they could have come up from my left they could have shot me from any direction so i worked my way back to the shed just in case until we got a knock and since we got the knock i went ahead and pushed and we went ahead and wiped the squad again guys gatekeeping is a huge strategy not many people do for whatever reason gatekeep guys if a, if a team has to come to you do not leave the circle to push them wait for them to leave their cover leave their camping spots to come out in the open and then go ahead and blaze them down now i'm having flashbacks i think right here i get i get annihilated pretty much yeah here it is right here i'm getting absolutely blazed but because i'm staying near cover i can go behind a, a tree and armor up and i'm pretty sure they keep peppering me they, i think they waste all my plates uh, this team was pretty good at holding us that that's exactly what they were doing they were gatekeeping us they saw us shooting the other team so they went ahead got the building and now they're trying to do to us what we just did to the enemy team unfortunately for some reason i'm using my heartbeat there's a there's literally a radar going on right now um, if there's a radar going on, guys, don't even whip out your heartbeat. You're slowing yourself down and uh, you look like an idiot, just like I did. Now, one thing I will say that I see a lot of people do, even the teammates that I play with, for some reason, if you have four players and one guy goes down and someone goes to red, now you're down to two people. What always happens is instead of having a 4v4 fight, those two people that are up while the other one's getting res and the other one's doing the resing, they'll try to challenge them. So now it's a 2v4. And by the time you get up and the other guy who's resing you are ready to fight, another guy's down. So you just go in this like, this never ending, you're down, you're down, you're down, you're down. It's kind of a selfish thing. Stop focusing on kills, guys. If a teammate goes down, hold, don't let them push you. But guys, do not peek snipers if they're actually decent shots. You wanna wait to get your entire team back up, reposition, and then go for shots. Because it's like I said, if you're just getting down, 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 you're wasting place, you're wasting ammo, and it puts the guys resing you at a disadvantage as well. All right, so again, normally I always say don't camp in buildings. All rules and etiquette get thrown out the window whenever it's the end of the game. Small circles and stuff, you need to play the buildings. You need to play cover. You need to, you need to, you need to. If that means you have to camp, so fucking be it, dude. Um, you're not really a camper if the circle favors a building and you're sitting in it. Luckily, my teammate and myself are all spread out to where they can't just all shoot at us. So the best thing about this situation is we have to move to them. They're safe. They have a ridge. Technically, they have the best advantage. If that team was to stay spread out and put shots on us at different angles, they would have annihilated us. We would not have stood a chance. But because they were clustered together behind this little tree branch and behind this little ridge and we were spread out, by the time they would peek, we would hit them from different angles. So guys, if you're out position, go ahead and spread out a little bit. Make the enemy, instead of being able to tunnel on the entire team, make him have a, a wide view to where he has to actually decide who he's going to shoot. You make them decide, guys, most of the time they're going to pick the wrong decision. But if you stick together as a group and you push across the street, they're just going to start spraying and you're all going to get wiped. You're not going to stand a chance. Yeah. I'm blanking right now. I'm blanking. Down two. Kids are weird. Almost and I got my rose up too. He's right here. He's right here. I thirsted one, guys. Not on him, not on him. Shit. Let's see. Look, guys, I've really been enjoying making these tip videos, and I, I believe everyone's enjoying it as well. And if you are, do not forget to subscribe to the channel. Also, guys, check out some of my past tip videos, and I'm also going to throw in a how to get better at mouse and keyboard video for those of you interested. Until next time, guys, y'all have a good one and good luck in Warzone.